All right, joining us live in the studio now is today's main hero, or he certainly did get plenty of help from 46 others today, quarterback Eric Kramer. Tell me, uh, I know Johnny Carson's famous in Burbank. Did you ever have a high school game like that in Southern California, like today? Oh, uh, no. Well, or we, we had some exciting ones, but uh, nothing on this level, no way. But, I mean, you personally, have you ever been as on as you were today? Uh, you know, I think a couple times, but, uh, like I said, not at this level, not under the circumstances surrounding this game. You were so cool. You, you could see it. there were a lot of tight shots of you, you know, going in and out of the huddle. And you seemed not flustered at all, like you were just uh, almost in a practice session. That's what, you know, the optimal condition is to be out there and relax just like you are in practice. And that's, uh, that's the way I felt today. All right, we're seeing some of your throws here. The game plan, obviously, was, was to take the short pass, which they were giving you. And these guys were so wide open. You were putting the ball on the money, but they were open. Yeah, um, that's, that was our game plan going in. You know, they... Uh, Coming in from the last game, they laid off our receivers quite a bit, and we thought there's more opportunities we could have taken than the last game, even though the score was so lopsided. But, uh, you know, we just wanted to take advantage of some of those this game. And it seemed to me that once that thing was rolling, why give the ball to, to Barry, even though he's the, the mm -hmm. best in the game, when, you, when you've been so successful throwing the ball? That's right. That's the way this offense should operate. I mean, we should be able to go out and control the game throwing the ball, much the way uh, Houston does. And then when they do finally back off, uh, we've got Barry to give the ball to, and, and that's when things really should open up. All right, let's take a look at the first touchdown, the, the one to Willie, which I thought was a magnificent throw because you've got him one-on-one -on -one back there. You put the ball exactly on the outside where you have to throw it. Yeah, he, uh, he took up the seam here, and the, the DB had him from the inside, so I just wanted to lay it up to Willie's outside, and, and he made a great, great catch. You guys really know each other really well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, Willie and I, have uh, we've hung together for two years now, and... And I think we know each other pretty well, and uh, we're just getting more comfortable with each other as time goes on. All right, what about the second touchdown throw? We'll take a look at it again, what happened there. Okay. Uh, well, here, as you see, the cornerback comes off and stutters a little bit like he's going to take uh, the receiver in the flat, and that's when I laid it up and Willie really over the top. You make it sound so simple. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it should be simple. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, there's really not much to it. Uh, you just got you to know what you're seeing out there. And like, that was the big key today. Was I was, got such great protection from the line. I was able to see everything just crystal clear downfield. I can imagine. All right, so there was a lot of trash talking on the field. The Cowboys were trying to intimidate you a little bit. Tell the story about Jack Del Rio, what he said to you. <laughs> well, the way I can understand it, I heard Jack say something about I was going to lose the game for it if we go out to the first series. And from what I understand, uh, Kevin Glover, our, our uh, center, turned around and said, not. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. But did you feel that they were trying to rattle you? Because let's face it, your first playoff game, a guy not with much experience, mm -hmm. did you sense that they yeah, were trying oh, yeah. to do that? Yeah, I, that was all talk before, during the week, leading up to the game, to try and get me, I guess, out of my game. And uh, I took it as a personal challenge that uh, this is the time for me to go out there and prove something. All right, let's turn our thoughts to Washington. A lot of people outside of Michigan didn't give you much of a, a chance today. Now you're already almost a two-touchdown underdog. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to give you a chance to win this game, but uh, you guys have relished that, don't you? We wouldn't want it any other way, yeah. and that's uh, some things never change. Maybe we, uh, I don't know what's going to have to happen. Obviously, we're going to have to win the game to get people back on our side. Because I can, I can guarantee it right now, if the questions tomorrow will be asked to you, and I'll be one of probably asking you, <laughs> what about the fact the Lions have never won in Washington uh -huh. before? The Redskins uh, have won, I think, 14 in a row against you guys. All this history. What do you say to that? Uh, tomorrow's a new day. You yeah. know, and next Sunday is going to... We're not part of the old Lions. We're not part of, uh, you know, the Redskins aren't part of the old Redskins that, that beat the Lions every year. This happens to be a... You know, a new part of the season, even though we went down there and got uh, whacked pretty good the first game, uh, we're a completely different team, and uh, we've got something to prove, I think. Well, good luck. I hope you sleep well tonight. You did you had a heck of a football <laughs> game today. Thanks, Fred. Congratulations, right. Eric. Eric Kramer, outstanding job today. Well, there's a lot more ahead in Sports Final Edition. We'll have the rest of the NFL playoff story. Plus, John Sally and Roy Tarpley make some headlines, and the Wings and Pistons find their winning stride. Wallen centers it, a kid to the door, Ray Shepard, oh, what a it home. Unbelievable how he got this puck into the net.